DDR1-2000 DDR1, the first generation of double data rate synchronous DRAM, introduced a major leap in memory technology. The key innovation was that data could be transferred on both the rising and falling edges of the clock signal, effectively doubling throughput without doubling clock frequency. Internally, DDR1 used a 2N prefetch system, meaning it prepared two chunks of data per cycle for transfer. Desktop DDR1 modules had 184 pins with a single notch to prevent incorrect installation, while laptop SODIMMS had 200 pins. They typically operated at 2.5 to 2.6 volts. Official data rates ranged from DDR200 to DDR400, translating to 200 to 400 megatransfers per second. On a 64-bit data bus, the highest standard, DDR400, could achieve up to 3.2 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. DDR1 became standard in early 2000s PCs, powering systems based on Intel Pentium 4 and AMD Athlon processors. Most modules topped out at around 1 gigabyte per stick. While it was a clear improvement over single data rate SDRAM, DDR1 consumed significant power and faced electrical signal integrity limits as frequencies increased. These limitations pushed the industry toward DDR2, which reduced voltage and introduced better signaling techniques. DDR2, 2003. DDR2 memory built on the foundation of DDR1, but introduced several key improvements aimed at higher performance and lower power usage. The most important change was moving to a 4N prefetch architecture. Instead of preparing two chunks of data per cycle, DDR2 prepared four, which allowed it to double the effective transfer rate without requiring the internal memory core to run proportionally faster. To support this, DDR2 modules operated at a lower voltage of 1.8 volts compared to DDR1's 2.5 volts. This reduction helped control heat and power consumption while enabling higher frequencies. Physical modules for desktop systems had 240 pins, and SODIMs for laptops had 200 pins. The notches on DDR2 modules were placed differently than DDR1, preventing accidental cross-installation. Official DDR2 speed ratings ranged from DDR2-400 up to DDR2-1066, with the most common mainstream speeds being DDR2-533 and DDR2-800. At DDR2-800, bandwidth reached 6.4 gigabytes per second on a 64-bit memory channel, effectively doubling what DDR1 could deliver. DDR2 became widespread in the mid-2000s, powering systems based on Intel's Core and Pentium D processors, as well as AMD's Athlon 64 and Phenom lines. However, early DDR2 modules often had higher latency compared to DDR1, which meant real-world performance gains weren't as dramatic until higher speeds became mainstream. Once adopted widely, DDR2 established itself as the standard before being replaced by DDR3. DDR3, 2007. DDR3 further refined memory performance and efficiency with the introduction of an 8N prefetch architecture, which allowed eight chunks of data to be prepared per cycle. This doubled the prefetch compared to DDR2, enabling much higher transfer speeds without requiring equally dramatic increases in the internal memory clock. Operating voltage dropped again, this time to 1.5 volts, reducing both power draw and heat output compared to DDR2. Physical DDR3 desktop dims kept the 240-pin layout, but the notch was moved once more to prevent mixing with DDR2. Laptop SO dims carried 204 pins. These changes made DDR3 modules incompatible with earlier generations. Official DDR3 speeds ranged from DDR3800 up to DDR3-2133, though overclocked modules and later revisions could push even further. At the high end, DDR3-2133 offered theoretical bandwidth above 17 gigabytes per second per channel. This performance was a significant leap over DDR2, and combined with lower power requirements, DDR3 became the dominant standard for nearly a decade. DDR3 first appeared with Intel's core i7 Nihalem processors and AMD's Phenom 2 series, 
and it remained the standard through Intel's Haswell and AMD's FX-era chips. Most mainstream PCs shipped with DDR3, and system memory sizes scaled up to 4 or 8 gigabytes per DIMM, which enabled widespread adoption of 16 gigabytes and larger system configuration. This generation is remembered for bringing high-capacity, relatively low-cost RAM into everyday computing. DDR4 2014. DDR4 introduced another major step forward, focusing on higher efficiency, larger capacities, and improved reliability. It continued using the 8N prefetch architecture introduced with DDR3, but refined the internal signaling and memory bank structure to allow higher speeds and better scaling. Operating voltage was reduced again, down to 1.2 volts, which helped curb power consumption despite the rising clock rate. Standard desktop DDR4 modules used 288 pins, with a curved edge design to ease insertion and reduce stress on the motherboard slot. Laptop SODIMMS used 260 pins. Once again, the notch position was shifted, making DDR4 physically incompatible with earlier generations. Official DDR4 speeds started at DDR4-2133, and extended beyond DDR4-3200 in the JEDEC specification. Though many performance kits and later revisions reached 4,000 megatransfers per second and above, at DDR4-3200, a single 64-bit channel could achieve up to 25.6 gigabytes per second of theoretical bandwidth. DDR4 quickly became the mainstream standard from 2014 onward, debuting with Intel's Haswell E platform and later adopted across Skylake, KB Lake, and beyond. AMD introduced DDR4 support, starting with its Ryzen processors in 2017. Capacity also scaled significantly, with 8GB and 16GB modules becoming common and server-grade systems adopting 64GB or larger modules. For most of the 2010s, DDR4 was the dominant memory technology and continues to be widely used today in millions of systems, even as DDR5 begins to take over. DDR5 2020 DDR5 pushed memory performance into an entirely new tier, designed to meet the needs of high-core count CPUs, servers, and modern gaming systems. Like DDR4, it uses an 8N prefetch but its internal design was restructured with features that allow much greater scaling in speed and efficiency. One of the biggest changes was increasing the burst length and bank groups, allowing more simultaneous operations and reducing bottlenecks in multi-core workloads. DDR5 also introduced on-die error correction, ODECC, for improved reliability, though it is not the same as full ECC used in servers. To handle power more efficiently, DDR5 modules shifted voltage regulation onto the DIMM itself, using an integrated power management IC, running at 1.1 volts. Physical DDR5 desktop modules use 288 pins, similar in count to DDR4, but the notch is placed differently to prevent cross-installation. Laptop SODIMMS have 262 pins. Speeds start at DDR, 5-4800 and scale upward. As of 2023 to 2024, mainstream kits commonly reach DDR5-5600 to DDR5-6400, with enthusiast modules pushing well past DDR5-8000. The official GDEC roadmap extends beyond DDR 5-8400, which more than doubles the peak bandwidth of DDR4. At DDR5-6400, bandwidth per channel reaches over 51 gigabytes per second. DDR5 launched alongside Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake processors in 2021, with AMD adding support starting with Ryzen 7000 in 2022. Initially expensive and limited, DDR5 has rapidly matured becoming the new mainstream standard for high-performance desktops and servers. DDR6 Upcoming DDR6 is still in development and not yet released, but industry roadmaps suggest it will deliver another dramatic leap in memory bandwidth.
Early information points to data rates starting around 12,800 megatransfers per second and potentially scaling much higher, continuing the trend of doubling transfer speeds roughly every generation. The architecture is expected to refine the prefetch and bank structure further, likely expanding on DDR5's dual channel per DIM design to allow even more parallelism within a single module. Voltage will likely decrease again, improving energy efficiency while supporting faster switching speed. DDR6 will be aimed at workloads that push memory to the limit, advanced gaming, artificial intelligence, high-performance computing, and next-generation servers. Although specifications are not finalized, analysts predict DDR6 will surpass 80 gigabytes per second of bandwidth per channel, dwarfing today's DDR5 module. If the timeline holds, DDR6 may debut around 2026 in conjunction with new CPU platforms from Intel and AMD, following the same pattern as previous transitions. It will gradually replace DDR5 as the dominant standard. Once manufacturing costs decrease, and software ecosystems adapt to the new speeds and capacity. I made an awesome video about every Intel processors, so don't forget to watch it later, okay?